Ну что ж, у нас, похоже, самое многочисленное. У нас не просто так тут. Мы назвали эту секцию сумма технологий. На самом деле, это не аллюзия на труды философа Фомы Аквинского. Это не аллюзия. Charles the Great, but not even, we're, we're not even referring to Stanislaus Lem uh, works, but uh, what we wanted to provoke, to instigate, is a desire uh, to become forecasted or forerunners even. Let's try to feel for the spikes of the roses not yet grown, as Stanislaus Lem used to write on a similar subject. So today we'll be talking about NFT certificates for blockchain-based domain names, about the life of registrars, after accreditation, the software package based on the ISP system, Bill Manager. We'll talk about people, we'll talk about money. Uh, let me introduce our speakers. Uh, Evgeny Yunusov is with that .uz. Uh, the Uzbekistan CCTLD. Evgeny Glotov came here from the that .kz uh, registry. Ilya Krukover. Uh, from Artis. Andrei Savelyev will be uh, speaking on behalf of that uh, over of that are you. Nikita Novikov with TCI and Karen Kazarian, uh, director for analytics with digital economy. We are going to have a direct connection with Montevideo, if I'm not mistaken, this is Uruguay, and Laura Marcolis is going to uh, talk about their project. Natalia Firina, the lovely Natalia Firina, the Bond girl, will be closing this session. She's an international marketing specialist, and like a true uh, Bond girl, she will be speaking about numbers, various numbers. Let's start with uh, Evgeny Yunusov uh, from Uzbekistan. NFT certificates, a technology NFT, применимые к доменам. Okay, um, I want to talk about the NFT certificates and how they apply to your domain name. Uh, business NFTs are unique tokens that are uh, connected with the blockchain technology. We use this technology to have a transparent history of data transfer of uh, data changes. We don't want data to be uh, 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 to be tweaked. One of the advantages of using NFT in the domain name space is uh, uh, to enable a uh, swift transfer of the domain names from one uh, uh, registrar to another registrar. Uh, we can use NFT to confirm the right to the domain name without reapproaching the registrar. When we are uh, transferring the domains from one owner to another owner, uh, an NFT certificate can be used to authenticate the origin of the domain name. 
an NFC certificate can be used also as a confirmation uh, for the use of domain if the, the domain name is uh, uh, is used to register a trademark. The information is stored without any uh, changes on blockchain. And uh, again, uh, we can use NFT to confirm the right to domain name uh, during court disputes. Over here, I'm showing a process of purchasing such a certificate. A customer, client, uh, applies to the registrar, makes a payment for the certificate. The registrar enters the data into blockchain. A certificate is generated, and then the client will be able to get the NFT certificate either from the registrar or via mobile app by addressing an NFT certificate server. We store data on blockchain. Uh, the data is um, connected with this NFT certificate. The data is not removed once the data is written on blockchain and the data is protected uh, from uh, modification. Uh, there is complete transparency of the data on blockchain for all stakeholders. And every bit of data contains the following set of data, the token ID, the domain name, the generated NFT link or image of this certificate, the hash of the email, and the certificate issue and expiration date. This is a template or an example of an NFT certificate. All the data that I have just described and the data that's stored on blockchain is recorded onto such certificates. At our website, you will find a complete register of such certificates. Again, you can use the certificate to uh, uh, find out about uh, the certificate issue and expiration date, the domain name, uh, the uh, NFT link. We also have a mobile app. Every customer uh, has access to all their domains via this link and the NFT certificates that they bought for the domain name. Out of this app, the customers can request uh, an NFT certificate. So again, an, a request should be sent via an app. A confirmation code is then sent to the email of this customer. And then the client will get the NFT certificate. Uh, this information can also be obtained via the browser. Uh, you can use MetaMask a plugin uh, to do that. The customer needs to um, enter the, blo the, the uh, blockchain wallet. And then uh, with the resources on the wallet, you will be able to um, buy or send a certificate. What should the registrar do in order to set up a server on blockchain, the so-called validation server or a validator? Software must be installed on such a server then the server is brought online onto the blockchain. The server will make a query to the network, and every member of the blockchain will confirm that the new entrant to this network is accepted. Over here, you can see the system for registration and storage of wallets. This page uh, is uh, available to the registrar. To add a wallet, the registrar enters customer data, 
the domain name and register the wallet where the NFT certificate will be stored. To generate and to store wallets, we used a national algorithm, or ZDST 1105, from 2009. Here you can see the uh, wallet before it is encrypted and after it is encrypted. This is the billing system for every domain. You can see the price of the certificate and other data. We use the source code, the open source code, and that's based on Ethereum to set up our blockchain. This slide shows the NFT certificate of a real domain name, digital.uz. And now I'm showing uh, some statistics of registered domains in the .uz zone year by year. Right now, 130,000 uh, domains are registered. And this is stati statistics for NFT certificates. We introduced the service in June 2023, and in the first three months, we sold 206 certificates. At the moment, this number reached 862. State-of-the-art technologies simplify the work of the registrars and makes the life of registrants easier. NFT technology can be monetized in the process of domain registration. Decentralization of data storage improves information storage. Blockchain ensures transparency of the data and its history. The data cannot be changed or modified. And when implementing blockchain, it's important to consider legal issues. And that's it. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Evgeny. Do we have any questions to Evgeny? Please go ahead. Hi, I'm Vadim Mikhailov. I'm with CCTLD.ru. Who are the customers of this service? Are we talking customer, uh, companies or organizations or individuals? And if uh, uh, they are organizations, are they public government? organizations or private ones? Well, I think I showed statistics there, but um, uh, mainly it's businesses. Uh, but we also have individuals as customers. In case of disputes, an NFT certificate is more efficient because it can prove the title to the domain. Are there any differences in uh, ordering such a certificate for individuals and for businesses? Because uh, the uh, businesses cannot always use an application or pay through an application. No, 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 there is no difference in uh, the procedure. Uh, well, you make a payment either as an individual uh, customer or as a business customer. Well, uh, my question is, uh, it's actually, I'm referring to the practice in Russia right now, but um, 
either the registrants will request a paper certificate or some uh, um, other certificate. I mean, if they want to register a mass media, then the registration authority will require a um, certificate on paper. I mean, uh, do similar requirements exist in Uzbekistan and would authorities accept a digital certificate? I'm not sure. Uh, well, I, I'm not an expert on legal issues. I'm a technical guy, you know, uh, I probably will not be able to answer your question. No. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Aschan Gimranov, and uh, I'm with uh, .uz. In case of a court dispute during a trial, the court will request uh, a confirmation of the domain name uh, title, and they will be uh, hoping to get a certificate on paper uh, with a stamp on it, preferably. Today, in uh, a case of litigation, customers do uh, submit a digital certificate to the court. There is a system uh, that uh, can be used in order to uh, confirm that the digital certificate is real, it's not a fake, it's not a picture drawn in a uh, PowerPoint or somewhere, uh, and the courts do accept uh, this confirmation. Besides, it's in the interests of the um, uh, of the uh, expectations at этой услуги как plaintiff больше продаж вообще в принципе ну на выходе например 2025 well, it was a pilot project for us. There, there is a regulatory sandbox for, you know, cryptocurrencies. We can't just uh, launch a blockchain project and, uh, you know, uh, use it. You have to register in the regulatory sandbox. Uh, it's been running for the past two years, and the initial feedback has been very positive. Uh, new technologies, I mean, people are excited. They're curious about um, state-of-the-art technologies, and I think that uh, people are very curious to learn how to use NFT wallets, NFT certificates. They want to learn, they want to get the experience. And it appeals to the generation of digital currency, you know, the, the digital money. It's an entry point to Web 3.0. And I expect to talk more about Web 3.0 at upcoming events rather than about the current web. Uh, we are making the steps towards that, that future of Web 3.0. Well, I think that uh, people are curious, it, and uh, the demand for the NFT certificates is driven mainly by curiosity. Thank you, Ashat. Сюда специально на конференцию пришли специалисты из СМИ, чтобы послушать конкретно вот этот доклад, эту тему. Есть вопрос еще один. And we also received another question from our online viewers. How much did it cost you to implement the project at .uz? Well, I can't give you a specific number, but... Um, Mm, it's it's uh, our staff wages, no more than that, nothing more than that. We did not uh, re require any additional investment. We didn't organize a uh, tender or a competition. We did everything ourselves. Oh, good for you. We launched it in 2023, but we started uh, getting ready for from, I don't know, back in 2021 and 22. Uh, we acquired the skills, and then we did everything ourselves. It took us about two years. Well, two years is a long time. Uh, 
And yeah, I think that we uh, can arrive at an approximate number. We know more or less the salaries, the monthly salaries. I mean, you can do the calculation yourselves. Thank you very much. Let's move forward. Well, deserve the pause. Another question? Oh, oh, there is another question, Andre. I'm so sorry. I've been looking at task. Oh, I have a question. Uh, how uh, expensive is one NFT certificate? And an NFT certificate? Um, can you have one NFT certificate uh, per 10,000 domains, or there is one NFT certificate per domain? I also want to um, uh, I was just say that uh, actually um, uh, I have a friend in Uzbekistan, his name is Murat, and uh, uh, together with him uh, we contributed to the development of UZ. We uh, registered 12,000 uh, three-letter domain names uh, back at the start of that UZ. Uh, many domains, uh, uh, you know, ascribes to one certificate. Now, can we open the last slide in the presentation, please? This is the uh, first NFT certificate that uh, we issued for digital.uz, that's the Ministry of uh, Digital Technology of Uzbekistan, and this is a picture that generally is generated. It's a hash. Um, a picture digital dot i dot uh, uz. You place it into a mathematical function, and the picture is generated. So every domain will uh, uh, be associated with a unique picture. The domains are unique in the same zone. Digital two or digital one dot uz um, will generate a different picture. So it's unique. One NFT per uh, one domain name. When uh, the uh, uh, if uh, the registrant changes, but the name stays the same, the picture will also stay the same. But but uh, and we are because of that we are thinking now that maybe we can uh, pass over the NFT certificate. The picture is the same uh, anyway, so the new owner, the new registrant, can get uh, the old certificate. And I also had another question. Oh, the price, right? Uh, well, it's two dollars. An NFT certificate is two dollars. So you buy a domain name for two dollars, and if you want to protect it, you have to pay another two dollars. Yeah, it's the same, it's same price as the domain name. What about other domain uh, zones? Uh, what about cooperation with other registries? Well, we are open to cooperation, open to dialogue. Ready to discuss that anytime. Thank you, Aschan. Thank you, Evgeny. We have a rare guest with us at this session, a representative of the Registry of Kyrgyzstan, Evgeny Glodov. Here is your microphone. Hello, my name is Evgeny. I'm from Kyrgyzstan, and I'm uh, domain name uh, registration manager. I want to introduce to you our register. Let's start with the slide. We've got to 100,000 square kilometers. That's the total uh, area of the country and the population, 7 million people. In our register, we have 15,000 domain names and uh, other uh, registries uh, were um, uh, probably uh, uh, showing much bigger numbers, but that's all we have. Uh, we register um, second tier and third tier domain names dot com dot edu dot org dot net dot uh, gov is available only to government institutions and all registrations there are closed to the public. 
Our register is in operation since 1995 this year. Uh, we will be celebrating 29 years, but next year we are going to have an anniversary, 30 years of maintaining the domain zone. In 2022, we needed to change the interface for online registrations of our users. And to the new interface, several functions were added, including, including the function of viewing the personal data in who is. And after this update, our users uh, could now publish the public key to DNSSEC. We do not uh, share the uh, full-scale DNSSEC with the users, but instead, uh, at their hosting site, the users uh, place the software and they publish uh, the, the key with us. So we can sign not only top tier, tier but the domain as well. And uh, as you can also tell from this slide, in 2023, we made several other changes and new implementations. We implemented encryption, uh, DNS over HTTP, DNS over TLS. We also added uh, RDAP, which is uh, an analog to who is. We also updated the algorithm of uh, top tier DNSSEC encryption. We use DNSSEC uh, since uh, 2010, but our protocol was uh, very outdated and Mikhail prompted us uh, to update it. And the last thing that we did in 2023 was uh, connect IPv6 to the root servers. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to the conference. Colleagues, are there any questions to you, Kenny? Yes, uh, the microphone is over here. In your opinion, what's the difference between RDAP and who is? I understand that the protocols are different, but are there any advantages of one uh, platform over the other? Well, we connected RDAP just because we were receiving requests from the users. Uh, the users were asking us if we had any analog to who is to find out information about domain or the domain owner. Uh, it's also possible using a Telegram bot. You can use uh, the uh, console uh, who is uh, not a web interface version. But RDAP, as far as we understand, it contains more contact information, including geographies, the geographical coordinates uh, of the domain uh, owner of the registrant. What about private data? I mean, uh, do, do you have any means of uh, closing the data? All the protocols, uh, no, 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 this is an opt-in or opt-out uh, option or feature. No, 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 you have to tick a box in the public who is uh, your data will be either shown or not shown. Yeah, that's exact, exactly that. But RDAP, you say it provides more information? Yes. So you are uh, hiding information on who is, but you are disclosing the same information in RDAP? Well, I may be mistaken, but I think that uh, Huiz doesn't uh, run on the, uh, uh, with uh, GSO, but uh, JSON, with JSON. But uh, RDAP um, uh, uh, uses JSON. RDAP is a more um, modern protocol. It's uh, It uses JSON, a machine-readable format. RDAP is more flexible. Uh, in terms of parsing access, for instance, uh, segregating access. For generic demands, it's uh, a must. And it's becoming best practice with CCTLDs. So I'll congratulations to you. There is another question from Andrei. 
Yes, thank you. Yeah, I have a domain, uh, one domain within that case, KG. I registered it about two years ago, and I noticed that the registration period is two years. I can only register it for two years. My question is, uh, was it always the rule since the inception of uh, that KG, or was it first one year and later you changed it to two years? Well, I think it's, uh, it's um, uh, best practice when you can uh, sign a contract not for one year, but two years. Thank you for the question. In fact, when we were developing this regulation, I was not involved, but uh, I guess this regulation was copied from ICANN regulation. So according to ICANN, the domain name can be registered for a maximum of 10 years, and the users who register uh, with us, they can renew their contract to the maximum of nine years. So at the time of registration uh, of uh, the domain name, you can sign a contract for 10 years, but uh, if it's a year and a half, then nine years plus uh, one year plus six months, that, that means it's more than 10 years. Well, I think that you can renew it by one for one year, but if you want to renew it for three years, you click uh, this button three times. You see, you should have clicked it three times. Mr. One click, double click. A double click instead of one click. microphone. Okay, this microphone seems to have run out of battery. Oh, we have another one. Oh, keep it, then keep it, please, because I'm going to introduce you now. Our next presenter is called Ilya Kukover, and he is with Artis. Uh, we have listened to uh, the people from registries. Now let's hear from the registrars. Ilya is going to just because uh, his experience of developing a special system for registrars. Hi, my name is Ilya Kukover. I'm from Kaliningrad, it's the westernmost most region of um, uh, Russia, and we are surrounded by uh, the countries within the European Union. In the past, uh, because of our location, we could have reached any TLDCon location uh, by car, and it was very easy for us to travel to Minsk, for instance. Uh, it's only 300, oh no, it's 520 kilometers between Kaliningrad and Minsk. It's not too long, it's just that we had to cross a couple of borders, but now we have to fly around and we had to fly to Moscow first to reach Minsk. I believe that uh, many of you know me already, and probably some of you are using our, our services. I uh, first got interested in the domain industry about 16 years ago. And before that, I was uh, selling uh, computer equipment, uh, I was uh, developing software, I even lived for a while abroad, and I registered my first domain back in 1998. Uh, three letter domains were available, and even two letter, excellent two letter domains were also available at that time two letter two character two symbol uh, domain names uh, two number domains as well and i was even discussing that with one of my clients i was trying to convince him that he would uh, benefit very much if he would buy a domain name that, uh, called 39.ru 39 is the code 
example, uh, number code for the region of Kaliningrad. In 16 years, I walked a long journey. I used to be a lone uh, uh, ranger, but now I have a professional team working with me. In our portfolio, we have uh, many interesting services, including an aggregator for registration of the domains that are being freed up. You can request a, uh, a domain that's about to be freed up uh, almost at every registrar that provides such a service using this aggregator. Uh, and not only uh, uh, you can register a domain that is about to free up, but you can also use search inside this product. And the .ru.rf uh, domain history is recorded on this website. We also provide services for hosting support including licenses, SSL certificates, and software development to the customer's orders. Uh, today, I'm speaking on behalf of Ardis. Ardis is the first accredited registrar in our portfolio. We got the registration with uh, .ru.rf, we became a domain registrar and uh, we opened uh, a Pandora's box by doing that. Well, first of all, we need to understand uh, why we need accreditation. Every hoster offers the service of registration of domain names as an add-on service. A hosting provider very often is a partner of an accredited registrar and a hoster registers the domain as a partner. As a result, hosting companies depend on the registrar. When the registrar becomes a registrar, gets the accreditation, this company can build long-term business in the domain name industry without the fear of losing the partner agreement or without fearing an increase in prices, and uh, this registrar can now accumulate its own partners in order to become a registrar. You have to go through the accreditation process. Uh, the accreditation specification can be found at the cctld.ru website. It's in the public domain. You have to meet several criteria. Uh, you have to have one million rubles on your account. You have to prepare certain documents and submit them to the uh, coordination center, to the cctld.ru. There is also ICANN accreditation for international domains. It's more expensive. In addition to the one-off payment, there is also an annual payment, which is about $4,500. And ICANN It doesn't require you to actually offer services of registrar. Uh, 
Для того, чтобы начать э, оказывать услуги в качестве... In order to start offering services as an accredited registrar, having received this accreditation, you have to sign a, an agreement with the TCI. You have to go through technical tests. And you have to start registering domains. Every new registrar, in accordance with the rules of registration, sorry, rules of accreditation, needs to start offering services within one year. It may seem that the best option is to become a virtual registrar. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be possible for you to start offering services immediately because the virtual registrar doesn't enable you to exercise certain functions, for instance, to change the DNS. We looked at the market. And we realized that there aren't many solutions for registrars uh, that uh, facilitate uh, their business operations. And we, at the same time, we didn't want to develop our own solution from scratch. We tested several solutions and we settled on Bill Manager. ISP System is a, an Irkutsk based company, and we uh, liked what we saw. We know that. It enjoys good reputation. Many hosters use the product, and the resellers, the registration partners, also use Bill Manager. Ну, какая была? Но вы тоже присылали. Там чуть не хватает у тебя? Uh, uh, are some slides missing? This is the presentation that you sent us. Uh, okay, uh, we had several slides on uh, APP Manager, but okay, we can save time now. I think that people will uh, find the Bill Manager if they want to, and they will be able to review it. So please tell us a little bit about the APP Manager. Okay, so after a while, we uh, decided eventually to uh, develop our own uh, uh, integrator for the bill manager to connect it to our register. It took about two months uh, to deliver the first iteration of the APP manager. After that, we debunked it, we uh, made it easier to use, we uh, enhanced it in many different ways, but the products uh, continue to operate as a, an in-house solution. Uh, we've been running it for about 10 years, and then we expanded the team of uh, developers, and then we decided that we'll have to rewrite this uh, solution for the sixth version of Bill Manager and to start selling it in the market. We registered with the ROS register and in the register of Russian software. APP Manager supports the TCI register. It supports type-in register. And uh, we decided to uh, continue developing this register so that it can uh, uh, operate with very sign uh, that supports com.net uh, com and then we'll uh, also um, ensure interoperability of other registers, new GTLDs and other global GTLDs. We also plan to embed a DNS editor. At the moment, billing doesn't have that. But probably it will 
will uh, be a standalone product. And we are also open to dialogue. We can develop integration with any registrar, with any registry. If you need to start offering registration services as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. I think it's an excellent solution for the newcomers to the market. Um, I'm told that we need to speed up. Let's leave questions uh, for the evening reception. And as to the presentation for the future, dear participants, dear speakers, the program committee sends you uh, a warning two weeks in advance of the conference. So probably there was some uh, glitch in the uh, transfer of these presentations. Anyway, let me introduce you our next. This is the right one. Okay, hello once again. Uh, the TCI certification center protects the internet, uh, and my presentation will explain why this is important for all of us. I'll start with two key problems. The first one is two thirds of the delegated Russian domains do not use and do not have valid certificate means that a secure connection cannot be established with them. You may assume that the protected, secured one-third uh, is composed of uh, the most important websites, the Kremlin, the uh, Parliament website, the Security Council, and even the website of the uh, Service of uh, Foreign Intelligence do not have TLS certificates. That's scary. Uh, the second problem is about 89% of TLS certificates generated in Russia are generated by foreign uh, uh, the sensors. Less Encrypt is the leader. It's responsible for 87% of the certificates. Probably they have excellent PR service. In 2022, as we all know, after sanctions were imposed on Russia, some of these certificates were recalled by the certified sensor, and this affected big government companies and uh, commercial companies companies on the sanctions list. It is a precedent. It creates threats to the stability of the Russian Internet. Numbers speak for themselves. Uh, let's imagine what will happen if under the pressure of the United States, a foreign certifying center decides to recall its certificates. I think that switching to HTTP is not a good idea. Let's take a look at the examples of uh, how foreign uh, certificates are used in Russia. Global science certificates are mostly used by large government and commercial companies and government services, including e-government, Mos.ru, Rosaltalk, EMEAS, the Moscow Stock Exchange, Yandex, Zen, Vkontakte, uh, the Central Bank and largest banks of Russia, and government services such as Roskomnadzor, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Digital Development, and even the website of the Register of Domestic uh, Software use the global science certificates. Less Encrypt uh, is, are, are very popular in e-commerce, among the small and medium businesses, and at information websites and forum. But even now, there are cases when Less Encrypt uh, certificates are still used by the government authorities, including the uh, state taxation service. We don't have much choice uh, in terms of census certification. There is much dependence on foreign census, and there is a threat of a massive uh, withdrawal of certificates. So the answer is straightforward. We must develop our own solutions. Uh, our government made uh, initial steps towards that. The National Certifying Center was established. And it uses, of course, the domestic encryption system, and the status will be recorded in the new version on electronic signature, uh, the law on electronic signature number 63. And, of course, it's priority for government services and uh, authorities. Of course, with the government, you can get two types of certificates from us. The uh, domain control certificates and the certificate that confirm the right of the organization to own and um, possess the uh, domain name. But even the census still has problems. Many government and commercial companies uh, use foreign certificates. In the last two years, uh, this census issued 11,000 certificates, which is 0.005% uh, of all certificates uh, are maintained in the domain uh, zone. And when TLS certificate is issued at notes, uh, uh, some of the 
transactions are performed manually and it takes up to five business days to get a certificate. Besides, there is a check procedure that uh, everyone who requests a certificate must go through, like a due diligence check. Um, and in 2022, the TCI Center of Certification was also established. Our priority is slightly different. We develop products for individuals and businesses, and we want to ensure maximum automation now a product. We are offering a certificate for one domain and one domain and all its subdomains. We use two crypto systems, COST and CDCA, and the certificates are issued for 90 days or 365 days, and we also generate certificates, uh, some certificates to protect um, email. Uh, today, within 10 minutes, you can get a certificate from us if you reach uh, with our personal account service. And there is a bot that automates the certificate generation, or you can use the websites of our partners. Speaking about partners, the certificates are used for domain names, and that's why the, our key partners are the largest uh, registrars of domain names in Russia, Regru and Ru Center. All of you can uh, purchase a certificate from our center at the website of our partners. I would like to thank them for their cooperation. Our certificates, well, actually, we entered into partner re uh, relations with VK Cloud and with the glove needs of the uh, presidential office. Uh, they use uh, our certificates uh, to ensure connectivity, with, uh, secure connectivity with their clouds and uh, uh, for their uh, internal departments. And we continue expanding our partner network. Uh, we cooperate with hosting providers and uh, distributors of DNS certificates. TLS certificates. We also want to share with you uh, another achievement of ours, but we'll start with theory first. This is the trust chain, which is the key element of the TLS system. And the basis of this chain is uh, trusted root certificates that are installed in operating systems or on browsers. And first things first, we wanted to ensure trust your certificates in the domestic operating systems. At the moment, we've uh, reached agreement of including our TLS certificates, root TLS certificates and distributors of the leading operating systems of Russia that you can see now on the slide. And that's not everything. Trust is crucial, especially trust from the experts of the industry and independent developers. We have always aspired to make the activity of our center as transparent to the user as possible. What helps us is uh, well, those who help us, colleagues from Yandex and VK. Our certificates are generated together with the uh, labels of um, nasty logs. Uh, and this is how uh, they confirm the independence of our certificates. Uh, transparency log. TCI certificates were added to um, uh, well, uh, the activity of our center are covered by, uh, is covered by several media channels. Security. Uh, the TCI um, uh, certificate center is connected to uh, uh, Solar JSOC, the largest center uh, of uh, cybersecurity, and we also have our own secure development of software department. Uh, we uh, do not rest on our laurels. Very soon we'll start issuing OV certificates, and in the future we'll be offering corporate TLS and uh, corporate uh, SME certificates. And we will be offering products for developers, like find the uh, code signature, uh, code signing, and other products. In conclusion, I want to thank all of you for your attention. Please. Uh, uh, join the community of trusted partners and users of uh, our certificates and of our center. Here is the QR code that will take you to the uh, center. I also want to thank the organizers of today's conference, the coordination center of .rf and the hosts from HostRBY. Thank you for the for allowing me the honor of speaking from this stage. Colleagues, I um, enjoy your evening, and I'm sure that together we'll make uh, the Russian internet a better and a more secure place. Right, thank you. I suggest that we save all questions about the certificates till uh, uh, tonight's reception. Or oh, Telegram, use Telegram. And send your questions to Telegram. He will start responding to your questions right away. Nikita, please pass the microphone to Andrei. And please welcome, this is Andrei Savielyev, Domi, uh, from um, uh, domains. you. Yeah, uh, I want to thank the uh, organizers for inviting us here. We are a young registrar, uh, ref.ru. 
I've been traveling to TLDCon uh, for seven or eight years ago. I used to be a domain, a domain investor before, and now I represent a, a registrar. I will be talking about the uh, secondary market and uh, the freed up domains. A question to the audience. Where is the 70% of the money of the world stored? Do you know what is the asset that accumulates 70% of all the money of the world? No, no, no. Okay, I'll answer this question on the last slide of this presentation. So, very quickly, a brief overview of the secondary market. Now, this is what's been happening. The number of domains sold in the secondary market uh, that are held by domainers or domain investors is the same. It's not changing. But this year, some large domainers, and there are about 10, 15 per, uh, persons, they are selling their portfolios and uh, they are selling them at wholesale prices. You can uh, buy the domains at 10 to 30 dollars per domain. A package of 20,000 domains can be bought for 15 million rubles only. Uh, no such generosity was ever recorded uh, uh, before uh, the secondary market uh, has uh, subsided and many domainers are looking uh, uh, for exit strategies. In August, uh, we saw terrible results. Uh, uh, today, it looks like the market has, the secondary market has hit the bottom. The portfolio turnover is 0 0.05 to 0 0.5 uh, percent. If you have a thousand domains, if you're holding a thousand domains, you can sell five to what is it? No, oh, sorry, from one domain to five domains a year, depending on your price policy. Five X dot R U. Uh, can be bought at 30,000 rubles. Uh, 4x ru.ru can be bought at 300,000 uh, rubles. Those who uh, sell uh, for more have to face a lower turnover. Those who sell for less, their turnover is higher, uh, but the prices are lower. Now, the .ru.rf domains that are being freed up, that are becoming vacant. There are a few players who are trying to fish for the domains. Uh, several years ago, we had about 1,000 people who were fishing very actively. Now, uh, it's about 200, 300 players in the market who are actively trying to catch uh, uh, a vacant domain. Online casinos came to the market several years ago again. Uh, they were very active. They are trying to capture domains associated with the schools or municipal services, and they spent about 65%, 60-65% of all the money in this market. These players, the online casinos, they are uh, very visible. They, have, they uh, are great contributors to the market. At the moment, there are 133 registrars in Russia, and two-thirds of them are technical. What is a technical registrar? It's a registrar that was established in order to get quarters or uh, to capture uh, vacant domains. If you have just one registrar, maybe in a week you'll be able to get your hands on to a couple of simple domains. There is a group of technical registrars with large quarters, as I call them. There are three such major groups that are trying to, uh, or that are actually catching 90% of all vacant domains. If you have fewer than 20 uh, technical registrars, you have uh, no business in the uh, secondary market. Regular registrars uh, are not even trying to fish for the registrars. Uh, 
крошки там стола собирает. Вот. И как следствие эти ГТР, группы технических... Да, ну, либо кто-то из доменеров покупает домен дорого. They participate in auctions. Этот домен остается у этого регистратора. Такая вот ситуация сейчас. Вот. Ну, they try to sell their domains or they keep them in their portfolios. Uh, and since we are in uh, Belarus now, I need to talk about this country as well. Today the uh, money goes to online casinos and from online casinos to these three groups of registrars. While in Belarus, the main is help uh, um, children's funds. I think it would be best for Russia if we had the same practice. New TLD zones. Вот я стал их противником, я всем знаком. I was dead against new TLDs from the very beginning. I do not recommend my friends to register in the new TLDs. You can have something like that for promo activities, for your hype, for marketing purposes, uh, but there is no business in them. There are external lists like that .aero. CETA is the registrar of that .aero. And it stops uh, working with Russian airlines. Some Russian airlines uh, exited the zone, others are still there. It's not clear what's going to happen with that IRO. In the current circumstances, every new zone, most of the owners of these new zones are from unfriendly countries. В России этих зон, ну, этих доменов. And there is a risk uh, that these zones will uh, not be available to Russia. Or Roskomnadzor, which is an internal risk, the Roskomnadzor may want to block a particular zone for the Russian users. Renewables are often very expensive in new, t in new TLDs. TLDs. A good friend of mine uh, bought Pro.Auto. He only spent 250,000, but in a year's time, he was very surprised when he saw a uh, an invoice for renewal of 250,000. Uh, so though they spent a lot of money on offline marketing, and not just online marketing, uh, this friend of mine decided not to renew the uh, product auto uh, beyond its third year. He uh, dropped this domain. And the greatest risk is uh, people do not understand what a new TLD, that a new TLD is a domain. Обычная аудитория, она не понимает, что это домена, если на визите. Uh, sales professionals. Uh, that SU is a single universe. It should be above dot com. It should be the main um, zone for everyone because you can decode it as a single universe. It's very similar to .ru. The prices are several times lower than in .ru. Only 100,000 domains are registered at .su. There are a lot of uh, three-character domains still available, and a good investor uh, will know where to capture the best domains now. Again, should be in the audience. I just want to say that they need to uh, uh, do more marketing uh, to promote the zone. And also they need to offer the same uh, price for the registrars as in .rf and .ru. 
I think that the zone is capable of growing to 300,000 if the prices are the same and the register will uh, become profitable. Now, to answer the question that I uh, announced in the beginning of this talk, 60% uh, of all the money in the, uh, of the world is in real estate. 34% uh, of the money in the world is stored where? Companies, that's companies. And only one, one and a half percent of the money is cryptocurrencies, domains, and everything else. It would be great if the domain market would change, would uh, grow. The real estate market is more than 1,000 years old, while the domain market is only 30 years old. In the short run, I hope very much that uh, domains are finally perceived as assets and would be uh, traded at fair prices. These are types of investments. Uh, I mean, this is where you can invest. Um, the stock market, the shares, the companies grow, you have to invest, but you see what happened a uh, day and a half in Russia, so it's a big question mark. Venture investment in the United States, yes, it's very uh, interesting and lucrative to look for uh, unicorns, but in Russia there's just every sales, and I do not know any other unicorn from Russia. And domains, um, a competent package, like 10,000 domains that you can buy for a million dollars, a good package, will pay back in 10 years. I think that domains is an excellent uh, target for investment. Thank you. These are our contacts. Please call us, please get in touch. Thank you, Andre. We have very, very little time. We've got like five minutes for the remaining speakers. Since we started talking money, it's time to give the floor to Karen Kazarian because his presentation is all about money. Thank you. I have a very long presentation. No, 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 no. You can't have a long presentation. You only have like three minutes. Well, since 2002, a lot of uh, regulatory uh, documents were adopted, and they all talk about pretty much the same thing. Digital economy, uh, the data, the measurements of the digital economy, referring to international papers, the United Nations, the ITU, and let's um, referring to OECD that made a fundamental research uh, on digital economy, data economy, uh, describing how these things should be measured and collected. In Russia, uh, the data is collected about the companies based on their uh, tax codes, uh, there, there are uh, questionnaires that are sent out to the uh, companies every year or every quarter. It takes a long time to process the data at the moment on the website of uh, uh, High School of Economics. You will find the statistics for 2022. The 2023 is still not available, only quarterly data. The same applies to 2024. You've you can find the, the report uh, for the first quarter of 2024. So obviously the statistics that we are collecting is uh, not very much up to date. And besides the statistics, this data um, assesses only a part of uh, the digital economy. We are uh, polling the companies uh, that according to the taxation codes develop software and process data like hosters, hosting companies. Again, the speed at which we are collecting and processing the data is very low. It takes about six months, sometimes longer, uh, to produce reports. It's a problem. 
it's a problem for the market that uh, can't, uh, that doesn't know what's happening right now. And sometimes they have to buy data from private uh, intelligence agencies. It's a problem for the government that invests uh, substantial resources into a digital transformation and technologies doesn't have up-to-date information about uh, whether their investment is having any impact. There are long-term solutions to the problem, and these require complete restructuring of the whole statistics system. There are short-term solutions, objective sources of information can be integrated into these statistics, and uh, we can gather this data at high speed, and we can get this information from the organizations that publish them and collect them. And these organizations are e-commerce companies, banks, and, of course, of course, and, and oh, sorry, I need to go back. And domain registrars, including the cctld.ru. Some time ago, I produced a research for the Coordination Center on the possibility of including the statistics into the government uh, statistical uh, facilities uh, based on the data we can make forecasts of economic activity. You have one minute left. All data on domains and their activity uh, is data uh, representing economic activity in the country. This data is valuable because we can always get the data from StatDom. The only obstacle is to build a model that could be integrated with the government statistical uh, models. And this is what we are working on right now at uh, our office. Thank you to all registrars. The services that you produce, the data that you collect, are very useful. And uh, I think they have greater value uh, then you think uh, they have. All the presentations will be uploaded to the conference's website and you can review them and send some questions to Karen. Now, we are going to have a, a speaker from Uruguay right now, Laura Margulis. I cannot watch. Right. Excellent. Let's take a look at the screen. And uh, greetings from Montevideo, Uruguay, in South America. Uh, I am really very excited to join you, at least uh, remotely, on this great uh, event, TLDCon 2024. And uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, the way CCTLDs and GeoTLDs domains are managed is really critical to the ide digital identity of the nations. And uh, as the internet grows, uh, managing these domains requires uh, balance in technical excellence, uh, policy frameworks, and of course, the community interests. From the security and DNS governance to market and sustainability, the challenges we face are uh, both very complex and involving. Today, um, we will present our research in best practices, emerging, emerging trends, and uh, how um, different regions are tackling these issues in ways that reflect their unique needs and goals. I am sure you will find uh, our research more than interesting, and uh, I guess we have a very little time uh, for our presentation, so I would like to give the floor to Natalia. 
And why I'm here. It's a pleasure to uh, be uh, at the TLDCon uh, in person for the first time. This is my favorite conference that I followed online all the time. Yesterday, uh, uh, a friend of mine and a colleague of mine at the at-large community uh, joined us online. Uh, we work for the at-large community uh, of ICANN. Uh, and we uh, try to protect the interests of the end users of the internet. They should be part of uh, the uh, ICANN policies development process. Uh, I, uh, I'm a secretary of URL, and this is the European part of the at-large community. And uh, I have uh, a huge pool of uh, people working with me. And that's why a year ago, we came up with an idea uh, to uh, develop the dot ducky project uh, we decided to uh, distinguish ourselves uh, against the background of all the uh, corporate uh, uh, corporate presentations highlighted in blue because they focus on uh, tlds and so on and so forth laura and i uh, launched our research uh, this year uh, the title is uh, shown on the slide we decided to focus on the uh, governance of uh, CCTLD and GeoTLDs uh, uh, as part of the uh, business model or business paradigm. We all are aware of the fact that uh, CCTLDs and GeoTLDs are uh, sovereign uh, parts of the internet, but in any case, any domain is a commercial uh, product, therefore uh, we wanted to analyze from different aspects of the way different countries and different geographies develop uh, their uh, TLDs and the way they manage them and govern them. Uh, do I have a clicker? How do I advance my slides? Thank you so much. Right, so uh, this is information in brief. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Laura Margolis uh, joined us online. Uh, Laura uh, lives in Montevideo, that's uh, in Uruguay, and she's an expert on uh, domains. Uh, well, uh, uh, she runs her own business. It's a small size business uh, focusing on developing uh, domains in her particular region. And uh, she represents ISOC uh, Uruguay. Uh, she uh, she manages it. And uh, in ALOC, uh, which is the at-large uh, advisory community in ICANN, she's a liaison officer for CCN ISO. I'm a marketeer, uh, and I'm also an, uh, an expert on uh, telecom and IT industry uh, since 2018. I've been part uh, of the global uh, discussion on internet governance, and uh, I, I'm also a volunteer uh, within the ICANN community. I've been a volunteer for many years. Uh, that's why we decided to run this particular research, because it seems to us that uh, uh, part of our uh, job at, uh, at large community uh, is about knowing about uh, the way different regions operate. However, we don't do this uh, at the at-large community because uh, the job description is slightly different. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Dot Ducky is a nonprofit uh, project. Uh, Laura and I run it together. Uh, well, uh, we are uh, uh, we, we we try to acquire and collect data, any data pertaining to DNS uh, systems uh, that uh, seems to be interesting uh, to us if we want to disclose it to the market. We uh, take interviews, uh, uh, we, uh, we take notes during ICANN uh, conferences. Uh, so, uh, we attend uh, both physically and online various conferences and events. For instance, we know what the uh, J JC and uh, ALAC uh, conferences and meetings discuss uh, what was the uh, decision uh, taken by uh, various bodies and so on and so forth. In other words, I hope we do uh, share enough information with the uh, at-large community uh, on a global scale. Uh, you will see a QR code in one of the slides and you'll be able to join us in, so in the social media. As for the CCTLDs and uh, GeoTLDs, they are a huge part of the domain market. They are, they are a very important part of the domain industry. And our objective was quite ambitious. 
we just started this project and we decided to get from all the uh, global uh, regions uh, uh, information from the registries and registrars. And we came up with a questionnaire containing 40 questions for zero. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, it was easy for registries uh, who collect their own information to answer this questionnaire. They were they were open uh, questions uh, and uh, yes and no questions, uh, stuff like that. So I want to share with you uh, the uh, uh, sum up of the data that we have collected so far. Uh, six questionnaires have been filled out so far, but uh, well. Uh, I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that these are different countries who uh, filled out our questionnaires. Uh, uh, well, uh, one a geo, uh, geo TLD was filled, uh, geo TLD from Moscow uh, filled out the questionnaire. Uh, Panama uh, was a part of that. Uh, uh, .Asia, .Quebec are expected to fill out our questionnaire. And I really hope that uh, by, uh, by uh, the time the ICANN 81 uh, starts in Istanbul, uh, I'll be uh, able to share with you an in-depth analysis of all the questionnaires. So like I said, this is a sample of the info that we have received so far. Uh, well, we uh, get ID, well, we try to establish a profile on every T TLD, for instance, so the uh, registration date, uh, the average uh, lifespan, uh, the cost of the registration, uh, the cost of extending the registration. Uh, well, uh, these costs are very similar, but uh, take a look at the price gap in different countries. Uh, that will help you to evaluate the difference. Even uh, this small amount of data that we have collected so far clearly shows that uh, the uh, the main uh, TLD registration accessibility uh, differs from uh, region to region. As is clear from this slide, over 60% of uh, TLDs uh, have been delegated by the owners, 67% uh, of domains have been parked. Uh, not all the registries uh, have uh, accredited registrars. We have also collected uh, data that I tried to sum up in this slide. Uh, it's titled market, market customers and competition. As is clear from uh, the images of the local domain uh, buyers uh, in different countries and in different regions uh, amount to over 70%. Not all the uh, respondents uh, could answer the question on the market capacity, but uh, a pro an approximation shows that CCTLDs account for over 60% of the market. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the local and regional domains cover almost everyone. And uh, GeoTLDs uh, share is less than 15%. So we're talking about uh, such domains as uh, .Moscow. Uh, and I believe that it's a great uh, market share for GeoTLDs. Another question that we included in the questionnaire uh, was the line of activities of the domain buyers. And as you can see, these are public agencies, uh, e-government, uh, local uh, manufacturing, uh, business, e-commerce, and education. And uh, all the other uh, lines include uh, things like social projects. So they could have been higher up uh, in this diagram, but uh, they enjoy uh, lower priority. Local brands are interested in registering websites with the help of uh, CCTLD and GeoTLDs, but uh, they're not being very active. And our questionnaire tries to uh, drill down into the reason for that. Uh, despite the fact that uh, there are competing uh, GTLDs uh, such as uh, .com, .org, and .net, uh, some others are listed here just uh, for the sake of uh, example. And uh, well, respondents uh, uh, told us that uh, the uh, CCTLD and GeoTLD prices are lower. And as was uh, mentioned yesterday, uh, 
it's easier it's much easier to find uh, free domains for registration in uh, cctlds and geotlds uh, uh, when we uh, go to uh, angili and tuvalo uh, i hope that i uh, put the emphasis in the proper place uh, we'll we'll see that dot tb and dot ld uh, feature more registrations now as opposed to uh, the initial period of time and of course the main zones expand they compete with uh, GTLDs, uh, and uh, the, the uh, market data is not uh, comprehensive uh, because there is no market research. Uh, and uh, alternative domain names also play uh, some part in that. Uh, PR uh, and marketing campaigns are run by registries, but the registries want registrars to be more active. Oftentimes, uh, the registration and uh, uh, the, the, the uh, registration costs are a show uh, stopper. Therefore, uh, if the pricing if the prices uh, do not go down, then the barrier is gonna uh, uh, be high. And uh, external barriers include geopolitical tensions and. Uh, well, uh, later on, I will show you the dynamics on various domains, and you'll see that the uh, Argentine domain has not seen any growth in the past few uh, years because the national economy does not allow it to expand. I'm not going to read through the figures shown in the slide. I just wanted to highlight that we touched upon such issues as uh, what tools are used, used by the registries uh, to collaborate with the target audience and the customers. Uh, it's more about marketing. So they offer loyalty programs, uh, CRM uh, systems uh, to track relations with their customers. They do marketing research on a regular basis, well, at least some of them. They run promo campaigns and we'll uh, focus on that to a greater extent later on. And we also wanted to demonstrate the most striking marketing cases to you. I really hope that uh, people in this room will tell us more about the mains and will share with us uh, some advertising campaigns uh, uh, the, to attract uh, the market uh, to register more domains. Capacity building for registrars is done by everyone. Uh, the quality of interaction with the target audience is high. And uh, well, we all believe that uh, CCTLDs and GOTLDs are uh, a unique uh, value proposition for the target audience. We uh, never ask for any sensitive information uh, from the registries because uh, they would never share it with us. And we never ask them about their revenue or profits so that we can do our calculations. It's a simple matter of subtraction and addition. However, uh, as you can see, uh, as far as the domain revenues are concerned, uh, there are uh, cash cows uh, and stuff like that. Well, so. Uh, asked uh, another question was about the DNS abuse. The average uh, figure is quite low because criminals are not really interested in uh, abusing uh, such uh, domains. As for the main takeaways, uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but uh, uh, there are preconditions for st a stable growth of any domain zone. Uh, well, uh, it, uh, it is linked to uh, the local economy development. Uh, there is a direct link. As for the high-tech trends, uh, a geo uh, TLD uh, will be lucky uh, uh, to uh, seize this trend. Of course, uh, we want to see more PR campaigns and promo campaigns from the influencers and public opinion leaders. Uh, the uh, pricing policy uh, might be an obstacle. And uh, as for the geopolitical tensions, for instance, uh, the .ru domain is very popular, is well known, and it doesn't need any uh, campaigns uh, to ensure a positive trend, uh, growth trend in the future. So uh, the business approach uh, can be applied to the domain industry. Uh, Ecom is a natural leader. Uh, geopolitics and econ economy uh, have a huge influence on the domain development. And of course, we want the domain zones uh, to develop and grow. DNS abusers are not really interested uh, in CCTLDs and GOTLDs. Not all the respondents had uh, comprehensive information. We're still... Uh, waiting on some of them. 
And uh, it's a very interesting fact that I wanted to highlight. Not all the registries are really interested in collecting such data. And in conclusion, I wanted to thank you for uh, giving me the floor. Uh, it was a pleasure to kickstart uh, day two. Uh, our research is ongoing, and uh, I ask all of you to help us uh, run this research. I really hope that you will be interested in taking part in uh, this project. Uh, we'll be happy to share information on your domains uh, by November. By November, we hope to get more data. Uh, please keep a close eye on that. And I hope that uh, a year later, I will join you. And maybe Laura will join us personally from Uruguay. Uh, we'll be happy to share with you some in-depth analysis and statistics and figures. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natalia.